rolling. Hello, Father Jerry again. We're interviewing another founding family. May I have your names? Betty Grunkemeyer. James Grunkemeyer. When did you first move into the northeast part of Franklin County? Ooh. Uh, we have built the house in 1968. 1968, okay. And what parish were you members of at that location? St. Matthias. Oh, you still went back to the Northland area? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Because the girls were going to school there. I'm sorry? The girls were going to school there. The okay, time. you still had children in the grade school there. Uh, when did you find out that there was going to be a mission starting in New Albany with a priest from Gehenna St. Matthew coming up to celebrate Mass for the Catholics in this area? I don't remember. No, re no <laughs> recollection? Okay, that's fine. That's fine. It was a long time ago. <laughs> yeah, well, 40 plus years ago. That's why we're doing this. So, um, were you informed that a priest was coming up by letter or announcement? Any recollection? I think somebody just told us. Okay. Letters, I think. Okay. Did you attend Mass at the public school? A couple. We were still going back and forth between the two. Okay. And then when did you stop going to St. Matthias, do you recall? As soon as we moved into the Lions Club, we were uh, going to Mass. Was that when the first pastor was announced? Yeah. Because Mass had relocated from the public school building up to the Lions Club uh, with one of the priests from St. Matthew coming up. Yeah, well, we, we were going then when the, they moved into the Lions Club. When it was still a mission from St. Matthew. Correct. All right, and then when the first pastor was named, you were still worshiping there yeah. for the weekend Masses. Um, as you were worshiping there as a parish mission, were there any rumors about a parish starting? Yes. Were you okay with that or? Yes. Excited? <laughs> yeah, because we didn't have to drive all the way back into Columbus. <laughs> Did you know anybody before you started worshiping there when it was a mission? Okay, no. Think, okay. I can't I, think of anybody. I can't no. think of any. Well, we knew Peters. Well, Bob and Mary, uh, yes. Madeline. Okay. Madeline. But nobody else. So you were as new to other people as you were to them, yeah. all right. Uh, a lot of excitement when the first pastor was announced and you're there as a parish officially, correct? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know about excitement, but it was good, good to hear. Yeah, okay, gotcha, gotcha. Uh, let's see. Had you heard anything that when the Catholics were worshiping in the school building that uh, due to a bond issue that failed, that the Catholics had to relocate to another facility for Sunday Mass? I'd heard that, yes. That was, in, that was in the newspaper out here too, I think, at the, the New Albany News. That the bond issue had failed and so you had to relocate for Sunday Mass. I had heard a, a rumor that it was anti-Catholic sentiment that kicked the Catholics out of the public school. I hadn't heard that. But Didn't hear that, okay. All right, that's fine. Uh, news to me. Yeah. Pardon me? I hadn't heard that either. Oh, okay. So, um, when the parish was announced, was that via letter or just word? I think we had it word of mouth. I, we might have had a letter. I can't. Okay. All right. So. I can't remember back that far. <laughs> All right. It's only 40 it's, years, girl. I'm sorry, but there's been a lot going on in the last 40 years. Yes, a lot of things have happened. So. Were you excited that a new parish was starting? Oh, yes. Anxious to get involved? Yes. Okay. Willing to sacrifice financially to help <coughs> oh, yes. build yes. <laughs> a new facility? Any response when you got into the what we now call the ministry center for the first time when it was dedicated? Were you happy to be in your own building? It was we wonderful said, well, to be there. That's a yes. good thing. And by that time, I think a lot of us, we knew we were going to be volunteering for everything because we didn't have money to do anything. Correct. The priest got paid and the rest of us pitched in and volunteered. I mean, we were sewing vestments, we were sewing uh, the altar cloths, we were, we were sewing everything. Okay. Point. Didn't you do bookkeeping for the parish? Yes, I did. <laughs> <laughs> that was a couple years that I wasn't working because Jimmy was in between ages that I thought Mama would be home. <laughs> no, okay. All right. Jimmy, your son, so. Yeah. Did you get involved with anything, Jim, initially uh, with the parish? 
Not not as much as her. Okay. You didn't <laughs> help paint or anything in the ministry center or lay tile or anything like that? No, I was kind of extra whenever something. When he had, they needed lifting and stuff for whatever, whatever I couldn't do, he was doing behind no. me. All right, that's good. You worked together as a couple. Uh, any response to where we are today? I think I think it's a good deal where we're at today. today. Okay. And I know we're going to go through more, more building, more church. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, yes. We built St. Matthias. We've built this one. We've built twice. Oh, yes. And you know we built St. Anne's down in Florida when we were living there. Okay. So, yeah. <laughs> Are any of your children and their families within the parish boundaries? No. Okay. They're in different parts of the city or county? Yeah. Yes. Gotcha. Uh, so personal memories that I have are, number one, being at a reconciliation service at the Lions Club, either in Lent or Advent in 1984, not that I heard your confessions. And then secondly, I was here for the dedication of the first church building in July of 1985, I think. I'd seen a video some years ago, and there were about 30 plus priests present for the dedication of that, that church. So. Yes. I was busy then. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> I, I, was, mean, I was sacristan at that point. <laughs> okay, <laughs> with the bishop and all these priests there. So, I remember after Mass, everything was kind of torn down, and a reception took place in what we call the tile area. So, mm -hmm. any other recollections? Mm. You know, just. You know, working at the festivals, working at the the bookkeeping, running the uh, the Christmas bazaar at the sales because we didn't have when we were still at the Lions Club, we didn't have enough room. So I mean, it was I was co-chairman on that one, and, <laughs> and everybody pitched in, everybody, everybody helped. Did. Nobody had any money. <laughs> Step we by good. step. Well, fortunately, you know, we were both working at that point, so sure. you could afford to do more. Sure. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, we still had the girls in Catholic school, and then Jimmy went to school out here, but he went to high school at DeSales. So. Okay. So we've done a lot of that. Correct. Well, thank you for the gifts that you shared when the parish was starting and being a founding family. So we're recording the history so future generations uh, will know how we got started. Well, you know, it was like Jack and Jenny Free. Uh, you know, Jenny was scrubbing the restrooms. Jack was doing the main part of the, uh, the interior of the church. I mean, it was just, you know, all the time we were doing something different. Right, everybody pitched in. Uh-huh. And it was fun. We were a tight community. Yes. And we made tons of friends that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. They're departing faster than I'd like to see, but. Yes. <laughs> you know, like Gail's gone, and she was a very. You know, Gail and I used to do the altar for all through uh, the holidays here in this church. Okay, yeah. And uh, we always stopped and had a fish sandwich on the way down to pick up flowers before <laughs> it's annoying before we came back. Okay. But uh, no, it's just they were good friends, you know. And you know they'd be at our house watching football games, or we'll be at their house, you know, doing the same thing. And there was just a group of us that were always together. My family was one of the families that started St. Gabriel Parish in East Linden in 1952. And my parents made great friends with other couples throughout the years that they were there. In fact, decades later, my, my mom told me that some people thought that my parents and two or three other couples were a clique running the parish. <laughs> <laughs> I was a kid, I didn't know. So. I, I hope nobody thought we were running the parish. We were just volunteering. No, no, no. So, <laughs> so. Uh, Anything yeah. else you remember or recollect would like to share? Other than you don't turn your phone off when you go to church. Correct. <laughs> I told him the story. The, bi the bishop called. Yeah. We're in church. He's beside me. And I'm going, Jerry? <laughs> and he's going, it's the bishop? No, I didn't know it was the bishop. The phone went off and I turned it off. 
I thought you did know. The first reading or the psalm, and then we got in the car after Mass as I was visiting with you in Florida, and I looked, checked the voicemail. The phone number was all zeros. I almost deleted it, and I thought, no, I better listen to the voicemail, and it was Bishop Campbell saying, I have a project for you. I'll call you later, mm -hmm. as I was telling Chip. So this was Saturday, and he didn't call me until Tuesday morning because it was Martin Luther King weekend. Offices were closed on Monday, and, and I, by that point, had left you and your hospitality and went to see former parishioners Bill and Linda Mowbray. Uh -huh. Bill had taken me to breakfast, and Linda said, as I was leaving, take your phone. <laughs> and so the bishop called as I was having breakfast with Bill Mowbray and two of his cohorts. And I said, yes, I would return. And I came back February 1st. 2018, officially. So, and he knew what it was going to be when he got the call from the bishop. <laughs> yes, <laughs> he was coming did, out. Of, he you, was coming out of retirement again. <laughs> and you were down in Florida. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. he was at our house. Was that? Yeah, yeah. <laughs>